Hello everybody, this is Jeffrey G27 and welcome to the episode. In this episode, I'm going to be using the Ford Grade 4 Mustang at Tokyo Expressway. I actually had a request sent to try this car out, so this is going to be the main theme for today's episode. I was looking much forward to show you guys uh, what this car could do at that track. Well, I was actually surprised at how good it was. Um, so, I'll be showing you guys two ways to get this car. Well, actually three, if you think about if you add in the little roulette mini game but there's actually two legit ways you can actually get this car so i'll be showing you both ways to get this car um i think there's two ways might be more than two uh the livery that i'll be sharing as well in this race if you guys want to copycat i'll share that too the build and the parts you need at the tuning shop and last but not least the race strategy of what to expect from this car at this track so without no further ado Let's jump into the episode. So the two ways to get this car is that here's the first way to get it. I just go to Brand Central, click on Ford, click on Showroom, and just go to the far right, and then you'll see it right here. Uh, this blue Mustang Grade 4, and you know, there's the stats. Just simple as that. Just pay a small fee of 350,000 credits if you choose to do that. But there actually is another alternative way and a much cheaper way to get the car. So if you guys go over to Missions, in the game and let's it's going to be right at the running stone if you get bronze and all these challenges right here so if you just complete the challenge in the bronze either the bronze time challenge or the, the bronze level then you can get this car for free I mean there's two ways to get it um, I think most of you might have done it through the Rolling stone mission rather than just buying it off but uh, those are the two ways uh, to get the car if you want to know on how to get the car. So after you get the car, let's now head over to the livery section. If you guys want to follow me in the game, my GT7 profile is JeffreyG97, and you can search me at JeffreyG97 either on race photos or at the uh, styles as well. But let's say if you don't follow me in the game, here is the livery that I'll be using. It's a quite interesting livery, I would say. It's a early 1992 to 1995 Mark Martin Favelline livery, which looks really good bringing back the old days back in the early to mid the 90s if you guys want to check out that livery those are the three key uh, hashtags but I just like how it looks uh, especially replacing that white main base color with a chrome silver look looks really nice um, so yeah if this was actually actual liver paint job uh, that he ran this will look pretty cool on the car that's for sure um, now there really isn't anything too much to really change the car, like the rims. Um, I don't think it really matters what rims you have on the car. And there's really nothing you can add to the custom parts, since it already has racing parts. But if you want delivery, you're more welcome to do so. If not, it's totally up to you. So after you get your delivery selected, decided, let's go to the parts. So we're going to be using sport hards. Um, as we scroll down to the semi-racing, uh, we'll be using the fully customized differential, also the low end torque supercharger, and the fully customized transmission. All these three parts right here. Uh, for racing, uh, pretty much nothing there from racing, but for extreme, we do have this steering angle adapter, and that's going to be it for the parts. So, as we put them together, here's the sport hard tires that we have on the car. There is a special suspension if you like to copy it. Here it is right here. And then right below that is the full differential if you want to copy that as well. 5 for torque, 15 for acceleration, and then 5 for braking. Uh, for downforce, uh, we actually were able to hit 200. So we maxed out both downforce sliders, which is great. Uh, for the ECU, just have a 100 fully customized manual transmission at 370. Uh, the supercharger, as you see here, the low end torque. That's what we have with the car. And then last but not least, we got our straight angle adapter, and that's going to be it for the build for this car. So the question lies: How good is this car in this race? Well, that is a good question. The car may not be as blistering quick as the GTR or the NSX, uh, but the car actually does feel pretty good in the race. Uh, with it being a four, great for a race car, it does have a little bit of that handling advantage because it is a race car um, but it does have some decently good speed too on the main straight 
probably give or take within probably decently good. Um, it actually is really good if it has a car, you know, nice that nice tow slipstream from a car. Uh, you have better results, but you should be right the mid 170s if you're by yourself without any drafting help. Uh, but for handling, like I said, the car felt really good, felt very smooth. Might be a little bit on the little bit on the loose oversteer side, uh, but, but apart from that, uh, the car just felt really dialed in and felt really good on the track. As you can see, I reckon some spots very easily. You can see the grip is there too. We're gonna make some contact with the newer Impreza, uh, but thankfully we do we do keep it uh, the spot. Thankfully, and kept it from out of the wall. Fire styles a P7. As we approach the next couple of overpasses, uh, you can see we got ourselves the next group right in front of us, and you can just see the huge differences of speed uh, compared to the Porsche right in front of us and this older Supra. Especially in the corner speed, it's what really uh, makes this car come to life. We can actually easily pass the older Supra, um, as it's usually up front. In this case, it's actually further back. So, P6 is where we are right now, and we got ourselves a very tricky right hand turn. As you can see, the leader's already gone. So is the RX7 Rio Mera, is already gone too. So, quite a very interesting start of the race. Uh, we're right behind the Porsche, so right outside the top five. We're going to send the Probably a deep dive. Yes, we can. Uh, we're gonna get ourselves right into top five by the first in the end of the first lap. Now, the tricky part about this car is uh, on that right hander hairpin. Uh, gotta be really careful because if you really get back on the gas pretty quickly and pretty aggressively, uh, that car will spin like a top. So just be careful around that last corner. You might want to put on traction control around that section of the track. But other than that. Uh, the car feels really decently good on the rest of the track. So, top five for our first lap. We'll fast forward all the way to lap six. Uh, we're finding ourselves with P2. We're actually catching the GTR, which is the leader since the Honda pit at the end of lap five and lap six. So, we get a much better run around these corners, and just like that, we're going to easily take the lead away from the GTR. Now, we're going to fast forward now to the end of lap nine. Uh, we could stay out for one extra lap, but the car really didn't feel too good in my opinion. So we're going to go ahead and get ourselves a new set of sport hard tires on the car. And while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and add some fuel to the car as well. Just a little bit, we don't need a whole lot. Uh, because this car actually has some really good, decent uh, fuel mileage as well. Just a little bit past that little icon, right about 33%. Uh, and that's going to be it for our main pit, pit strategy. So we'll go ahead now and fast forward to lap 11. Who's going to be a hot lap for the race? I'm going to let you guys watch this lap, see what this car can do, uh, and then I'll see you guys when we get back to the end of the race.
up as we were able to pull off a 209.3, which I thought was a pretty good, decent lap time uh, for this car. Um, the car was great, considering not having the best speed compared to the rest of the cars. The handling was really good, very smooth, good fuel mileage overall as well, and good tires as well. Across the finish line is going to be 26.39 uh, for our total time, so not too slow of an overall race uh, for the car. Um, so if you guys want to try your luck at it with this particular car track combination, you're more welcome to do so. Could be maybe a little bit challenging, but like I said, the handling is really good for this car, so you should really gain a lot of time, especially on Sector 2, not to mention the good fuel mileage as well. So. Uh, that's going to be it for the episode, and since we made contact, unfortunately we did get ourselves the standard bonus for the race. Now here's a quick preview, and I actually had this as a request. Uh, we're going to be using the Grade 3 Lamborghini Huracan at uh, Le Mans. So this is the next episode, is going to be about this car track combination, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, I tried out a little bit of it, and I actually liked the car. Especially the livery, that lovely golden livery. So I'll make, I'll make sure and show you guys the livery. Uh, you guys may have noticed that a, that livery is from the GT movie itself. Um, so I'm much looking forward just to show you guys the race itself, the car, the livery, you know, the whole works. But hopefully you guys in fact enjoyed the episode. If you did, why not leave a like? And if you guys would like to, are interested in following me or like to see some more content, Further down the road, when I go ahead and subscribe and turn on that bell off for notifications. And if you guys would like to check out the last episode, I did cover using the Porsche 959, which I'm not too sure if it's still in the game or not. But if you want to check that video out, you're more welcome to do so. Hopefully, that'll help you out in your Tokyo grind as well. And with that being said, hopefully, you guys have a great rest of the day or night for my B. And I'll see you guys later. Take care.